Definitely time for an update. It's been a while. Uh, quite a few changes. A lot of them have to do with things that grow. Um, we're just go through and kind of do everything. Start at the bottom here. And so down here we have a bunch of what's called pandan going here. It's a grass. It's used in different dishes, uh, used in desserts. Also nice if you take a leaf of that and put it in rice while you're cooking. Gives it nice aromatics and flavor. Um, this is Chinese Maloon Guy, which coincidentally is the one that's native to the Philippines, not the one that most people use and know as Maloon Guy. It happens to be more flavorful. Um, here we have the uh, Cerisa Treat. The English name for this is Kersan, K-E-R-S-O-N. It has the little berries I've mentioned before. They taste like Captain Crunch berries, but now they're actually finally in season and ripe. So those are actually those are very tasty. Down here, we tried doing vermicast, and we were successful. I made a couple batches of vermicast. But it's a lot of work, it takes a lot of time, and I found a source that does it, and we can get it by the bag pretty cheap. So we planted two varieties of ginger in here. One is called lipstick ginger, and here's a baby flower. Now when that gets bigger, it has uh, little pieces that come off that you can pull off and eat. They're very sweet, almost like a candy. And so one side will be populated with this variety, and then on this side, we have variegated shampoo ginger. This is interesting. Uh, if you YouTube or Google shampoo ginger, legend has it that it was discovered by Hawaiian women who would use it. Uh, it would grow on the shores near waterfalls, and when they were bathing and washing their hair in the waterfalls, they would uh, use that as a shampoo. So I'm looking forward to that, having actual bulbs that we can get the shampoo from. Here's an ornamental variety of banana. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be edible or not, but when it's younger, that flower is even more brilliant and beautiful than it is now. It's kind of nice to have around. So this area in here, I'm doing some, trying to do a microclimate where it's a little cooler and a little more moist than other areas on the property. I haven't really covered this area before. Usually I, I skip it. Um, but down here, instead of putting a fence, we put a hedge in, if you will, of a type of flower here. That they call it bird of paradise, but it's not bird of paradise. It is in the same family, but it has these beautiful flowers. And these things, you know, besides being very colorful and attractive to look at, these flowers last for months before they replenish. And you can see here we've mostly got this side wall in here. All the trees up on the front porch are doing very well. The, the one, a lot of them we've planted up on the upper terrace, but the ones that are still here will remain in pots. And we have a couple different varieties of mango. We've got Macopa, which tastes like red delicious apples, but they're hollow like a bell pepper. Really nice, very tasty fruit. Uh, we have Tombus, which are similar to Macopa, but smaller. We have a lot of pomegranate coming in now, which is really nice. I think the flavor on these are great. The only downside to the variety we have is they have a hard seed, which doesn't bother me, but some people don't care for the hard seed. Oh, up in here we have there's no fruit right now but this is miracle berry and when it has fruit you, you eat the fruit before you eat other fruit or have anything with like say vinegar and so if you eat the fruit and then have some have vinegar and the vinegar tastes sweet almost like honey and it does the same thing with lemons and limes and passion fruit it makes them extremely sweet this is kaffir lime, which is used a lot in dishes like tom yum from Thailand. 
uh, instead of lemongrass. And this is actually more aromatic and more flavorful than lemongrass. And we use this for cooking around here as well. Now, as you come up, you have the elong elong tree. The elong elong tree, for hundreds of years, or maybe longer before it was documented, uh, has been used as a perfume, but the extract from the flowers, which grow year round, is used to make different perfumes in in Europe and America and other places around the world. And so at night, it becomes even more fragrant and the fragrance will travel about 50 or 60 feet. So it's mostly upwind of the house and that fragrance at night carries through the whole house and it's really nice to have that. A uh, recent addition here, you see across the top of that ledge is a large six meter long trellis. We have four different varieties of dragon fruit growing on it. So it take about a year, but that'll become fully populated and the dragon fruit will drape down and we'll have like a dragon fruit waterfall, if you will, at the top of this ledge. My uh, living wall haven't really done a lot with it lately. We're waiting to finish the exterior of the house and then I'm gonna go ahead and pay more attention to this again. Um, we'll put some different flowers in here, orchids that are low light, things of that nature, but we have this staghorn fern here that's doing pretty good, it's healthy. Um, the vanilla bean is doing really good. It has not yet had any flowers. I'm hoping to one day get you know, get some flowers and get some fresh vanilla beans off of that. And look, it's the uh, rare clothes vine, <laughs> multicolored. Let's see. Pretty good view of Mount Matutum today in the local volcano. Um, here in the side yard, which I'm I'm very pleased with how this side yard has come together. It's it's starting to feel almost like a park and it's just pleasant to look at and, and nice to be down in that area. So we'll go down there now. And these, uh, this is a Lanzoni tree and we have three more down there. We have two varieties. We've got Duco and Long Kong varieties of Lanzonis. Maybe Maybe we'll get fruit on those next year. We've planted those four or five years ago. Here are my passion fruit trellis. It's doing very well this year. Uh, we have three varieties now, all of which are blooming and fruiting, and we're having fruit on, so we'll have those pretty regular again. And But it also, there's a giant version of passion fruit called Grenadilla which I'm finally getting my very first uh, fruit from. These are the flowers. They're much larger than the typical passion fruit flower. And when these passion fruit are mature and ripe, they'll be about the size of volleyballs. And they taste similar, or not similar, they taste just like the other passion fruit, but they're not sour. They taste like they already have sugar added. And here's one of many examples the passion fruit we have coming in that this will be ripe I don't know maybe another week that'll be ripe and we have those all throughout here and it's looking pretty nice down here up here we have a couple of calamansi trees calamansi is the version of lime that's native to the Philippines and that thing we've always got hundreds of pieces of fruit growing on it now this vine, one of my favorites, um, this is called New Guinea Creeper and it is related to the national flower of the Philippines, it's the jade vine, except instead of being jade in color, the flowers on this one are red and it's just starting to do a major blooming now. Uh, you see there's quite a few and it not real good picking up in the light here but about 10 percent of the flowers have come out and within the next week the rest of them will come out and it's going to be just magnificent down here so i may do a separate video to show that because it'll really be it'll be appealing 
Uh, here we got the uh, mana plant. Uh, mana plant is used, it's called the betadine plant. And the leaves, if you rub them on wounds or cuts, they're antiseptic and coagulating. These flowers are on a version of insulin plant. And this isn't the one used to make the insulin medicine, just in the same family. The thing I like about this one is these flowers because they're really tasty. They go good in salads or you can just eat them or you can use them as a garnish and they uh, they replenish every day these are starting to get quite a few ornamentals coming in more every day sometimes you get surprises they just show up um, this is our uh, mangosteen tree planted at the same time as the lanzones about four or five years ago ish Maybe get fruit on that one next year as well. This is an apple guava tree. One of Lee's favorites to eat. I find the fruit a little hard and bland for me, but she really likes the balance of flavor in it. And we're getting those year round now. It's nice to have those. Got two uh, Mondo variety bananas ready to harvest, maybe in the next week or so. As you can see the terraces are starting to fill in, we're getting some grass, it's looking nice. All of our coconut trees um, are starting to become mature. The, uh, they had a hard rough start. That was some of the first things we planted were these coconut trees and we didn't prepare the holes, it's limestone. So it's taken them quite a bit of time to get going. But now that they're mature enough and the roots are strong enough, they're really taking hold. And uh, looks like we'll finally be getting some coconuts. This is black sapote. It's in the persimmon family. And the fruit, when ripe, is the same color and texture as chocolate pudding. Uh, it doesn't taste like chocolate pudding. It's semi-sweet and very appealing. It's a nice fruit. There's the uh, chocolate pudding fruit. Back here, I'm really looking forward to this one. Uh, this tree is called a butte, and it's basically a yellow star apple, but it's supposed to be just a fantastic fruit to eat. Funny thing, this was given to me by a friend, and I put it in a pot with a plant that I was told by another guy was a, a giant corpse flower. And I thought it was dead, and so I planted this tree in the same pot. And then I waited a couple months until, you know, it looked like the tree was healthy and going to be okay. And then I planted it here with the soil that was in the pot. And this popped up. Now it turns out this isn't a corpse flower, but in the fa same family. And this is an elephant foot yam, which does have a giant flower. It's about two foot tall. So I'm just gonna kind of let this go and see how it goes. Uh, could be an interesting experiment. We've got papaya all over the place. Um, this one has the most fruit that's ripe right at the moment. But uh, pretty much all the papaya we grow up here does really well. Limestone makes fruit sweeter. And so the papaya here, are pretty fantastic really. This tree is taking a while to get hold. I'm sure it'll be fine, but this is called Malaysian Jade, and it's like rambutan, but about five times the size of rambutan and slightly sweeter. This is Aviark, and Aviark is the sweetest version of jackfruit in the world that, well, anybody around here is aware of. In fact, it's so sweet that they press it and use it to make sugar. Uh, here we've got, we've got lemongrass all over the place. We use it to cook pretty regular. Here's another variety of ginger. This one is called torch ginger. And I figured another couple months and we'll start getting flowers on that. And it has these beautiful red flowers that last a couple months. This is an acai palm tree. Uh, pronounced different ways, A-C-A-I. It's a power berry. 
planted it about two months ago and now it's finally starting to get new leaves so obviously it's it's adjusted and doing well now so looking forward to that we only kept a couple trees here on the property mostly it was an invasive species of trees called gemolina which were really hard to get rid of and nothing would grow around and they're good for you know just cheap construction wood so we got rid of those but the two we kept were this and this is the monkey pod tree which grows a nice fruit it's kind of like a big giant string bean but a fruit and this variety here we've got a couple pieces of fruit coming in up there this is a nonus which is in the same family as a teas but when the fruit when it's ripe isn't green it kind of turns pink and it's a really nice fruit to eat uh, this large guava tree We'll cut it down in a year or two when some of the other trees we're going to plant up here uh, start doing well. And one of those trees will be this Malaysian jackfruit, which is uh, has a unique taste. Uh, also, it's kind of orange, almost like dark red, all or dark orange, almost red color to it, with this really nice flavor and aromatic. This is a Belite tree, which is the spirit tree of the Philippines, and it's said to have both good and evil spirits. And it's doing well. We planted this vine in it. It's called a uh, blue sky vine. And eventually, the blue sky vine will hang down under the canopy of the tree all over the place like that and have these beautiful blue flowers in it that I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Uh, the, spirit tree when you come near it you have to ask permission from the spirits so you do that by using the term uh, tabipo which translates to uh, may I pass and if you google the most expensive and rare version of durian in the world uh, you'll find it comes up with the name Musang King and this is a Musang King durian another fruit I've never actually had I'm just taking it from other people's word that it's good and we're going to grow the tree and see how that comes out and here's that flower the blue sky vine see the these big bumblebees love it uh, so eventually this cover this tree will just be covered in them and have them draping all over the place Another variety of banana we have is sogging tin duck. These are giant bananas and when they come out each individual banana is about a kilo or two pounds and over a foot long. Sometimes about a foot and a half. Here we have a lot of people mistake this for big knife, but this is actually uh, it's a fruit called inyum. Let's see if I can get that in the sunlight. So picture will come in better and it's a nice fruit it comes out once a year and it's similar to like a black currant so we commissioned a local artist to make these clay pieces for us we're gonna build a rest house of sorts up here and use the local clay pieces to make these columns and these are made in the traditional fashion so this clay comes off the guy's land and he piles it up and he ties off a water buffalo and has the water ball water buffalo trample the clay for a couple days and uh, that's how they get it more malleable and workable and then they don't have actual kilns what they have is uh, they pack them with dry rice holes and uh, and cover them in rice holes and burn it, and so it fires them, so they're they're stronger, but they're not uh, they're not hardened as much as you would in a full you know Western modern kiln. But very happy with how they came out, and we'll start putting a roof on this next month, and we'll tile it, and we'll put electrical in and water, and and then we'll plant trees around here after the roof is in. It'll be real nice. 
Well, this terrace is pretty much done. I'm calling this my peanut butter and jelly terrace because back here we have what are called peanut butter plants. And so they have these berries about the size of a ping pong ball. And inside it's supposed to be the same taste and texture as peanut butter, not peanuts. And so we've got the flowers now. So just a matter of time until we start getting the fruit. And then I will also over here, I'll plant blackberry jam fruit. And so blackberry jam, same thing about the size of a, pin, of a ping pong ball, but inside the fruit is the same taste, texture, and color as blackberry jam, like processed jam. Uh, another nice view of Mount Matutum in the valley. This is an ice cream bean plant. Uh, I, again, another one I haven't had. Uh, I've only heard about from friends and some say it's not so appealing, but others I've heard say it tastes like a cross between ice cream and cotton candy. And so we're going to find out. Now, got this little gate is almost done. They're painting it today. They'll finish up. We've got the fence all the way around the property now. This rest house, when the other one is completed and construction is done, we'll get rid of it and we'll plant some more fruit trees there. So, this is a plant called Saluyo. So when it comes up, we'll leave it alone and let it grow because it's used in dishes here, uh, similar to how you use okra. It's, it's real slimy and I don't care for the taste and the texture, but it seems like most everybody else does. So. Um, and they make something with it. I just eat something else, and we have plenty of it growing around the property. So, very happy with how the terraces have come in. They're filling in, got grass coming in, the fruit trees are planted. It's raising, rainy season, so it's the perfect time to be planting all this stuff, give them time to get rooted and grow before the dry season. And uh, now it's just going to take time. So. Lots of steps as you see, we've got 55 steps leading up to the house in front and here on the back side of the house we've got 45 steps and then down on the side yard I think it's 22 steps. So I wander around here a couple times a day, get up move around, dogs love playing around in here um, and as these trees come in We'll have even more shade, you know, it'll become more pleasant than it already is. Over here we have date palm, and those will go on the upper terrace once the roof is in. We just don't want to plant them ahead of time and uh, take a chance on them getting damaged during the construction. Now this tree is another one we kept, it's a sandpaper tree. But I planted these, this pink flowering vine up in it, and it flowers year-round. And then the tree itself has little tiny white blossoms that come in a couple times a year. And this tree really attracts butterflies and bees, so I, I call it my butterfly tree, which of course sounds much more attractive than sandpaper tree. Uh, in the mornings, the birds and the butterflies and bees are all in here. And we're just staging different ornamentals here and when things get further along we'll transplant them things like magnolias and orchids and my new favorite fruit in the philippines which are grown from seed is sempadoc and sempadoc is like a cross between marang durian and jackfruit and just has this amazing flavor uh i was just, i can't even begin to tell you how impressed i was it's my one of my two favorite fruits in the world I'd say it'd be nectarines in this one. So when those get a little bigger, we'll transplant a couple of those up the hill. Uh, here's my fig tree. It produces fruit pretty regular. It's very nice figs to eat. Uh, fresh figs, if you hadn't, haven't had them, taste much different than the figs you might buy dried or in Fig Newtons or things of that nature. These trees will all get transplanted. They're extras. They'll get transplanted to our other property maybe in another week and 
Here we've got our grapefruit has decided it is happy now and the roots have taken hold and sometimes you can see the difference in color on the leaves. It'll grow almost a half a foot in a week. And two more varieties of bananas back here. These ones in front are sugging bungulan and when they're ripe the exterior is still green and they're very sweet. I like the texture. They're the favorite banana I've found so far in the Philippines to eat. Uh, here we have yellow mangosteen, which is decided also it's happy here. It's doing very well. Uh, I've got a bunch of foxtail palm in here that Lee's is growing. These are really good uh, palms and coconuts. The roots go straight down, so it's great to prevent erosion and, uh, and help on the edge of hills. And so that's what we've done along with some of this ornamental bamboo. Now this other variety of banana right here is blue java banana, also known as ice cream banana. And so when they're ripe, the exterior of the banana has kind of a blue hue to it. And uh, they're very creamy and sweet. We, we've had some of those to eat and now we're, we're growing our own. This is Kamansi. I planted this about two, two and a half years ago now. Uh, and it produces a fruit that's used more like a tuber. It's di different soups and things, very fibrous, great taste. It also has these massive leaves. I mean, the length of that individual leaf is about, it's over three feet, over a meter long. And a prehistoric looking. More of our coconuts are really coming in as well. Another variety of ginger, we have purple ginger and next to it purple lemongrass. And then over here we have, I think that's the only regular ginger we have. Um, everything else is kind of novelty ginger. And last but not least, this is my breadfruit tree. I'm looking forward to when that starts fruiting so I can start including breadfruit in our diet. Um, it's a great starch replacement. It has nice flavor and it's a very versatile fruit to use. So lots going on lots of changes it's rainy season so in a couple of months i'll do an update video and there will be some things in here that there will be significant changes so more to come later